What's going on on my YouTube buddies? I'm Jacob with another movie review for you guys. And welcome back to another installment of my Universal Classic Monster series. And in today's review, I'm taking a look at the very bizarre movie in this franchise, the 1940 film, The Invisible Woman. The Invisible Woman was released in 1940. It is the third film in the Invisible Man franchise following The Invisible Man and The Invisible Man Returns. Strangely, we had two of these movies released in the same year. The Invisible Man Returns was also released in 1940. I don't know if they wanted to do two different movies at the time where the success of The Invisible Man calls them the fast track another movie and because it was so cheaply made it was still able to come out within the same year whatever the case is it's quite crazy we had two franchise movies and a big existing franchise like the invisible man from the universal classic monsters come out within the same year i do find that crazy we hadn't had like the mcu we hadn't had like a two spider-man films in one year or two Iron Man film, so it's really crazy to me that we had two Invisible Man films in one year, even if one of them is The Invisible Woman. So what do I think of The Invisible Woman? Let's find out together. So in The Invisible Woman, an attractive model volunteers to test a new machine, making her invisible and now intends to get even with her boss. This movie stars Virginia Bruce, John Barrymore, Maria Montez, John Howard, and Charlie Ruggles. This movie is strange. Like, it really is. Like, there's no connection in this movie from the other two films. Like, it's, it's nothing about a crazy scientist making himself invisible and becoming a serial killer in the process. It's not like the original film or Invisible Man Returns where it's an innocent man who uses the serum to prove his innocence. This, and there's just, there's nothing even that, this isn't even a horror film. Like, there's nothing in here that's scary. There's nothing in here that's thrilling, atmospheric. This movie is actually a screwball comedy. Don't let the synopsis fool you. Yes, this woman gets even with her boss. But it's done in a comical way. It's, it's, not, it's not scary, like she doesn't kill him or anything. She just teaches her abusive boss a lesson and he becomes a better person and it's done this common 1940s screwball manner. So I do find it bizarre that Universal, who was known for being the horror studio at the time, decided to switch things up and do a comedy. I don't really get why it's part of this collection, honestly, because there's nothing really that scary about it and I can see like diehard horror fans diving into this might possibly be disappointed with this film and yeah I guess it's a little frustrating because it doesn't have the tones that the previous two Invisible Man movies had uh, but I'm not gonna lie I did enjoy the comedy approach to this film I am a sucker for classic screwball comedies like Bring It Up Baby and stuff like that so it was a lot of fun seeing that type of filmmaking play out with this premise, I did find it very entertaining. I thought Virginia Bruce was a charming lead and I definitely enjoyed her comedy in this film considering I'm not familiar with her. And I did enjoy her interactions with the cast and there are some legit funny moments in here. This movie was considered risque for the time because part of her being invisible is the fact that she has to take her clothes off in order to be invisible. So there's a lot of jokes about her being naked, which apparently was more risque in a woman's perspective than with the man's perspective, apparently. But yeah, I did find this movie pretty entertaining to watch. I found a lot of the slapstick comedy pretty hysterical at times. It's fun seeing some of those like really hokey comedic actors at the time delivering such scene chewing dialogue and even though the acting's not really that great of the time it was definitely a blast to watch and i still highly enjoyed this film it was really fun i noticed margaret hamilton showed up in this film who best you may know her best for playing the wicked witch of the west and the wizard of oz she plays one of the housekeepers 
in this film, and she does have some legit funny moments in here. And it's fun seeing a more comical side of this actress, considering she's best known for playing one of the most memorable villains in screen history. Again, this movie's not great. Uh, again, if you come in expecting this to be a classic horror film, that's not what you're gonna get. It's not even, I wouldn't consider this a monster film. I would just consider this a slapstick comedy with a sci-fi premise of the time. And I can see that disappointing a lot of people. And then even the story-wise, like the synopsis I read, that scenario is done within the first 20 minutes. The rest of the movie is her struggling in her invisibility because there's side effects to her invisibility that makes it look like she's permanently invisible. So there's a lot of comedy sitting around that. And then there's like this romance that goes on with this Playboy character who really looks a lot like Clark Gable. I don't know if that was intentional or not, but yeah, I saw him and I always thought it was Clark Gable. Obviously they could not afford Clark Gable being a B-movie, but still he looked a lot like Clark Gable. And speaking of this, they, the, the romance is very forced. I did not enjoy the romance angle of the film. It did feel very forced and I wasn't really buying it. Especially considering uh, some of the things he was saying towards her while she was invisible and she didn't like that he was a playboy, so I, them falling in love just seemed off to me. Uh, you also have this story plot with these thugs that are trying to steal the invisibility machine because they want to make their boss invisible. And then there's this gag about uh, these characters who try to get invisible without the right ingredients. And there's this funny little side effect with that which messes up their voice and that running gag was so hilarious that it was honestly one of the funniest things of the whole movie. Apparently this is one of the more divisive entries in the classic monster franchise, I guess because this is a lot sillier. It's not really a horror movie by any means. It's a lot more comedy based. But I actually did enjoy the comedy angle and while it does not hold a candle compared to the other two Invisible Man films, The Invisible Woman dared to be different and I honestly enjoyed this unique approach to the franchise. Not scary but it is a ton of fun to watch and I do consider this this is a good rainy day movie. It's some good mild enjoyment. It still has remarkable visual effects when she becomes invisible. Like it amazes me that these invisibility effects have held up remarkably well for movies this old. Like, this movie's 80 years old, and yeah, the, the effects have hardly aged a day. And that's pretty excellent in itself. It, it's definitely worth commending and how well-crafted these effects are for how limited the budget and technology was back then. So that is very impressive. I did enjoy The Invisible Man overall, and I am giving the film a 3.5 out of 5 stars. And on the 100 point scale, it's getting a 68 out of 100. So that wraps up my review of The Invisible Woman as, as part of my Universal Classic Monster Review series. If you're not aware or if you're new to this channel, I did buy this collection a while back of all 30 Universal Classic Monster films and I've slowly been going my way through this series. This was like the first big movie franchise in Hollywood and I felt obligated to tackle the first big franchise especially not only for it paving the horror genre but also the idea of different monsters sharing a universe together it's definitely something that inspired like the mcu the dcu and other franchises that we're getting today so in this collection we have all the dracula movies the frankenstein movies the wolfman movies the mummy movies the Creature from the Black Lagoon films, the Invisible Man films, the crossovers, the Phantom of the Opera, and even the Abbott and Costello crossover films. And quite a, a lot of these movies I've never seen before, particularly the sequels to the original films and the crossover films. So I'm excited to dive into the back catalog of this franchise. So, so if you're new to this series, click a link in the description below for a playlist so you can catch up on my past reviews. 
And don't forget to click the subscribe button and the notification bell to be notified of future reviews in this series. So, so far I've tackled Dracula, Frankenstein, The Mummy, The Invisible Man, Bride of Frankenstein, Werewolf of London, Dracula's Daughter, Son of Frankenstein, The Invisible Man Returns, The Mummy's Hand, and The Invisible Woman. Next in this series is one of their all-time great classics. I'm excited to dive into this one and share it with you guys. That is The Wolfman. Can't wait to dive into that one because I was not too big a fan of Werewolf of London and this is Universal's first great werewolf movie. I'm excited to dive into this one and share it with you guys. But if you've seen The Invisible Woman, let me know down in the comments below. Would you follow the film? Did you love it? Did you hate it? Were you mixed on it? But whatever your thoughts are, please be civil and respectful of others. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. Click the subscribe button to see more content and the notification bell next to it to be notified of future videos. If this is your first video, besides movie reviews, I also do TV reviews, trailer reactions, ranking videos, and other fun stuff along the way. I have some more videos planned for you soon. Hope y'all have an amazing day. God bless, and I will see you next time. Goodbye!